from Outdoor Travel Channel, it's Cooking with Rob. Before we get started, please take the time to subscribe, then click on the bell icon to get notified of our future videos. Well, hello everyone, and guess what kind of day it is? Yep, it's Traeger Day. And today we're going to cook a recipe from Sam the Cooking Guy. At the same time, we're going to use a Traeger instead of using a grill. Because, uh, well, we're going to use a Traeger grill. <laughs> so, that's our little twist on it. And we're going to change up the recipe just a smidgen. But we're not going to use a bread pan. We're going to cook it on a tin foil and we're going to cook it in the trigger and indulge. And what's really going to be nice about this is it's going to be much more than what we can eat tonight. But uh, the leftovers is what the special privilege is of making too much meatloaf. But while we're making the meatloaf I'm going to turn it on, get it fired up, and then I'm going to turn it up to 375 but really what I want is 350 and uh, I'm using mesquite for this and uh, we want to get the internal temperature of the meat up to 155 and uh, also we want to cook for about 40 40 minutes and above we'll be checking the temperature but we're looking for that 155 one of the things I want to do before uh, I make my meatloaf is I want to make a red sauce and I want it to be a little bit zesty so I'm going to use tomato paste and I'm going to use a little bit of a crushed red pepper and I'm going to use about a tablespoon and add it into a bowl and that's going to be used for the inside and outside of my meatloaf Here I'm adding red pepper and I caution that you put in what you think you would like. Uh, ours is going to be a little bit hotter than normal so you might want to take it down to a teaspoon. Before we start mixing our meats together I had to cut up some celery. And so I just grabbed a, oh, maybe six pieces of celery and just cut them up uh, into small wedges. And then I already had some pre-cut yellow onions, and I'll show you those in a moment. While we're making the meatloaf, I'm going to turn it on, get it fired up, and then I'm going to turn it up to 375, but really what I want is 350. And uh, I'm using mesquite for this and uh, we want to get the internal temperature of the meat up to 155 and uh, also we want to cook for about 40 40 minutes and above we'll be checking the temperature but we're looking for that 155. Now in the stove I'm getting a little olive oil and getting a pan ready to saute my onions and my celery. I'm setting my stove at medium high so I don't burn anything. I don't want to cook these all the way through, just mildly. Here I'm adding my yellow onions. Now my celery. Let these cook for a while. Add a little bit of salt and pepper, about two pinches worth. After that, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of minced garlic. You can add more garlic if you like, but I, uh, I like a little bit more than just a teaspoon. Just a dab of olive oil on the garlic. And in about a minute, blend it all around, get the flavors all together. Don't overcook this, just about halfway, and then we'll pull it off the burner. Some of the spices we'll be using is kosher salt, pepper, Worcestershire sauce, tomato paste, red pepper, and Italian seasoning. We'll also be using Parmesan cheese, Monterey Jack, and also mozzarella cheese, which isn't in the picture. Okay guys, it's ready to go. <laughs> All right, we're ready to go. I got the Traeger fired up and now warming up. And now it's time to mix everything together. So I am using a pound of Jimmy Dean sausage and a pound of 80-20 uh, hamburger 
and we're gonna fill that right in here. So to get these open, I kind of cheat. I just kind of put a cut in the side all the way across, and I'll do the same thing on the hamburger. Cut all the way across. And I'm set to go. So I just peel it open. Throw that on in there. Also, I thought it'd be kind of funny to let you know is I used a really tall bowl and uh, I used my secondary camera, which is my GoPro, which is too short to look over the bowl. So I had to use dog biscuit boxes to get my camera up there. So let's get rid of that. Next, we're gonna add two eggs. Uh, I got those right here. One. Two. For my next trick here, I'm going to add some breadcrumbs. I'm using Progresso. Uh, it's just a plain breadcrumbs. Uh, you can use any kind you want but this is the one I'm gonna use. About three quarters of a cup. Next thing we're gonna add is uh, Worcester sauce, Worcestershire sauce. I can never say it, about a little two tablespoons, I would say. So I'm just gonna kinda of guess it out here a little bit. Looks good to me. Next, I'm gonna add some Italian seasoning, about two, oh, a large tablespoon heaping, maybe, would be enough for this. Let's see here, about that much, yeah, a little more. And uh, there we go. Next, I'm gonna add some uh, kosher salt, about a tablespoon, how to do the trick. Doesn't have to be exact. A tablespoon. Next, we're gonna add my red sauce with red pepper in it. And uh, I'm gonna put in about a quarter cup so I'm gonna go with about one, about, about that much. I'm also gonna add some Parmesan cheese to this, and I'd say about three, uh, one fourth of a cup. Uh, I just I'm going to use my leftover, which is about about that much. So I'm just gonna dump that right on in here. Wish I had a little bit more, but that'll work. Now we have all those ingredients in there. I'm going to add in my vegetables, which are on my stove. Dump all those right in here. Next, we're gonna blend this by hand. What you didn't see is I have washed my hands. I've actually washed my hands several times, if you're wondering. And uh, we're gonna blend this together and there's nothing like just using your hands. Uh, I'm gonna try to get my camera a little easier so you can see it. But we're gonna blend it and we're not putting it into a cake pan or a bread pan. We're going to put it on a tin foil and make it into a loaf and then we'll add some stuff to it. So here we go. Now we have this all blended, we're gonna put it onto the tin foil. But before we do that, we need to oil it. Okay, we're gonna oil this tin foil. And I just like to put a couple of squirts of uh, olive oil on it. Get one of these squirt bottles, it's ready to go. Then I just get a paper towel. And just spread it around. And that should keep it from sticking too bad. Way. Alrighty, I have this all mixed up again and got my tin foil all oiled up. I'm going to put this right here and I'm just going to form it into a loaf. And uh, yeah, you're going to get your hands dirty. And yes, I've been washing my hands constantly. You're just not seeing it when I'm editing the video here. So. look really good.
<laughs> kind of like a one end a little thinner than the other, like I'm trying to taper it here or something. But yeah, it's looking kind of pretty. Alrighty. Pretty happy with that. Now we have this formed. Next thing I want to do is take my sauce and add that right to the loaf. And you can use all kinds of sauces. I'm just using a tomato paste with red pepper in it. And we want to get this all over the whole loaf. Don't forget to do the sides and the ends. No, it doesn't have to be perfect. And that was just like a perfect amount to cover this puppy. All right. <laughs> now we want to cover this with cheese. Now I had a choice of using, well, two cheeses. I like uh, mozzarella cheese and Monterey Jack. So it's mixed together. So I did that prior to the show here. And we're just going to smother that in yummy cheese. And if you don't have enough in your bowl, go get more. I'm going back to get a little bit more mozzarella cheese for the ends. Uh, just make it a little short. But I'd say I'm using a good cup of cheese here. And I just want to make sure my ends are covered really well. And I'm sure this side needs it. Oh, this looks good. All right. <laughs> After you put the cheese on, what we want to do is just turn this tin foil into one giant cookie sheet uh, so it doesn't leak. And we're going to put the whole thing in the grill. Now I'm going to slid a, a little cutting board underneath this to make it easier to slide into the trigger. So once again, the trigger should be set at 375, which means that your trigger will probably be up to 350. There's about a 20 degree difference in my, my trigger. And we want to get the internal temperature up to 155. And uh, we're going to check that with a, I think I'll go ahead and put a probe in it, but uh, also I'm going to check it manually, just be on the safe side. And uh, uh, sometimes you want to go hotter than that, but remember, when you pull food out of uh, being roasted, it continues to cook. So we don't want to overcook this puppy. We don't want it to be dry. So we're ready to go. Let's put it in the Traeger. Okay, guys, we're ready to load this in. You can see why I have the plate underneath it. This is a plastic plate, so I can't leave it on the grill at, at all. Or it's going to melt. But it will help me just slide it right into the Traeger. So here we go. <laughs> Just to let you know, before I finish cooking this thing, I did put a probe into the side, uh, into the middle, so I can monitor it. I also have a wireless uh, thermometer, so we're, uh, we're shooting for 155. I'm still going to probe it with a manual thermometer, just to make sure I'm hitting 150 to 155. And even if you take it off a little cool, remember, it will still cook even when you pull it out. So. Uh, yeah, 155. Here we go. I just checked the measurement. We're at 145. I just got a peak, and so let's peak. Oh, that looks delicious. So yeah, we're gonna get about 10 degrees to go, and we'll shut her down, pull it off, let it rest for a little bit. And I'm going to make some mashed potatoes and eh, a little corn on the side and make some gravy and ah, heaven.
So I brought this into the kitchen and uh, it looked beautiful. I mean, absolutely beautiful. And uh, so the next thing I want to do is just cut into the side of it and see what it looked like inside. And it has a hard crust because of the cheese. But when you open it up, it has kind of a red color to it because of the uh, tomato paste I used. And it was cooked perfect. And uh, so I just pulled a piece to the side so you could see the inside of it. It didn't look dry at all and I was really happy about that. Okay guys, we're going to do a taste test here. Uh, looks like it's cooked all the way through. Looks pretty yummy, but here goes. It's good. It's got a little kick to it. And um, it's not dry. So, uh, good stuff. Oh, well, what do you think? Does it got a little kick to it? Mm -hmm. A little bit, not too bad. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's actually really good. It's a little different texture than uh, a normal meatloaf, but uh, it's got cheesy and a crust on the outside, and also uh, uh, with a can with a red pepper in it. It has a little bit of afterburn after it. Not much, but it's actually really good. So there you go, guys. There's a, a meatloaf in a Traeger. Hope you enjoyed it. So we'll talk to you later. Thank you for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over. Then go down to the description and think about becoming a member of our Patreon. This will allow you to get special content just for you and help us build future content. Thank you.